Bless the maker and his water. Bless the coming and going of him. May his passage cleanse the world. May he keep the world for his people. One of the most iconic elements from Frank Herbert's Dune series are the sandworms that live beneath and roam in the deep deserts on the planet Arrakis, better known informally as Dune. The sandworm, known to the Fremen tribes as Shai Halud, the Great Maker, is a true force of nature to be reckoned with. The sandworms are long, towering, invertebrate and cylindrical colossal worm-like creature with a gaping, crystalline, tooth-filled black hole of a mouth. The sandworm's skin is extremely thick and orange-coloured. It served the function of armour and was comprised of many scales, each a few feet in size. These many scales overlapped and interlocked with one another to form the armour that protected it against internal sand invasion. The sandworms are attracted to rhythmic vibrations on the planet's surface. They would breach in pursuit of the origin of such vibrations, creating a truly terrifying spectacle. This was an effort to defend their territory, of which they were highly protective. An example of this can be seen in the first novel, with Paul Atreides' first encounter with a sandworm, which destroys a spice harvester. Paul crushed into a corner beside a window, stared down at the silent machine on the sand. The worm sign had broken off about 400 metres from the crawler, and now there appeared to be turbulence in the sand around the factory. The worm is now beneath the crawler, Kind said. You are about to witness a fin few have seen. Then they saw it. A wide hole emerged from the sand, sunlight flashed from the glistening white spokes within it. The hole's diameter was at least twice the length of the crawler, Paul estimated. He watched as the machine slid into that opening in a billow of dust and sand. The hole pulled back. Gods, what a monster, muttered a man beside Paul. Since they are highly protective of their territory, sandworms do not leave any survivors behind. So to have faced the onslaught of a sandworm and have lived to tell the tale is very rare in the planet of Arrakis. The worms are attracted to and maddened by the presence of Holtzman force fields used as personal defense shields. And as a result of this, these force fields are of little use on Arrakis. This device will attract and enrage any nearby sandworm, which will destroy anything in its vicinity. Sandworms are also highly territorial when it comes to other sandworms in their territory. As soon as two sandworms sensed each other's presence, they would let out roars of challenge, bellowing melange smelling exhaust from their carnivorous throats and a clash of the titanic creatures would soon follow. The smell of a sandworm was so potent that it was said you could smell a sandworm before seeing it. Described as a cinnamon type smell, the presence of the spice melange was intense and so was its odour. A unique fact about the sandworms is that the main component of the sandworms diet was sand and other inorganic and dry components of the Arrakis crust. Sifting through huge dunes of sand, the sandworms would also eat sand plankton found in Arrakis' desert for nourishment and sometimes even younger and smaller sandworms. On our planet, Earth has trees, but the planet of Arrakis is almost devoid of all plant life, and yet some life is able to thrive on this harsh planet. There's a particular reason why it does so, even with the small presence of any plant life. It is the sandworms themselves that provide and help generate oxygen in the atmosphere of Arrakis. The body of a sandworm represents that of a blast furnace, its internal organs generate heat and temperature in such tremendous amounts that it acts as a relentless source of heat energy to the planet. The sandworms are the environmental link that keeps life afloat in the desolate, spice-rich planet of Arrakis. Without them, life would perish. The sandworms truly are mighty beasts and creatures of biblical proportions. In the first Dune book, Dr. Wellington Yui tells Paul Atreides 
that specimens up to 450 meters long were spotted by observers in the deep deserts of Arrakis. In comparison, the average sandworm of Arrakis was more than 10 times the size of a blue whale, the biggest creature on earth. Some people also believe that sandworms from 700 to even 1000 meters existed in the southern pole regions of the planet, but this has not been confirmed. The sandworms of Arrakis are also extremely ancient. It is hard to study these creatures, but many theorists have estimated that a typical sandworm can survive for thousands of years at the very least. Their longevity add to the overall mythos of these creatures. On top of all this, sandworms are also creatures that have thunder and lightning as their messengers. The sandworm's trail is followed by a massive lightning discharge in the upper atmosphere of Arrakis. When the sandworm approached its breach point, a surge of lightning would soon follow. Researchers claimed that this was due to the result of a static electricity discharge into the extremely positively charged air. Sandworms are incredibly tough and are almost indestructible. There are only three known ways to kill a sandworm. The first way is noted by Lee Kynes in the first novel, who says that high voltage electrical shock applied separately to each ring segment is the only known way to kill and preserve them. The second way is by using atomics. Atomics are the only explosive powerful enough to kill an entire sandworm with conventional explosives being unfeasible as each ring segment has a life of its own. Atomics have also been banned throughout the Galactic Imperium. The final way is with water. Water is poisonous to the sandworms, but it is in too short supply on Arrakis to be of use against any but the smallest of them, and it never rains on Arrakis. Close study of the sandworms by several sources reveal that their lives are split into three cycles. The cycle begins with the pre-larval stage in the form of the sand plankton, then they grow into sand trout, and finally, if lucky, some will develop into miniature sandworms and then adult sandworms. Microscopic creatures called sand plankton feed upon traces of the spice melange scattered by sandworms on the Arakine sands. The sand plankton are food for the giant sandworms, but also grow and burrow to become sand trout, or what the Fremen call little makers or water stealers, the half plant half animal deep sand vector of the Arrakis sandworm. More is known about the sand trout than the sand plankton. The sand trout are described as resembling large freshwater leeches and exist in vast numbers in the sands of Arrakis. The small larvae like creatures had the ability to link themselves together in vast numbers and insist all available free water on the surface. This process created deserts and eventually made the planet of Arrakis dry and desolate, allowing the sandworm to survive as sandworms cannot survive in a waterlogged environment. The native Fremen tribes themselves protect their water supplies with predator fish that attack invading sand trout. Sand trout can be lured by small traces of water and Fremen children catch and play with the sand trout. The fungal excretions of sand trout would mix with water below the planet's surface to form what was called a pre-spice mass. This mixture would begin a chemical reaction. Gases are produced within the pocket due to fungusoid growth. The pressure builds and becomes more intense until finally this mass would then be brought to the surface of the desert through an explosion of pressure. This is referred to as a spice blow and the spice blow would kill most of the sand trout or little makers. The few sand trout that survived the violent exothermic reaction of a spice blow would then coalesce and complete the metamorphosis into a young sandworm. This water stealer died by the millions in each spice blow. The few survivors entered a semi-dormant cyst hibernation to emerge in six years as small, about three meters long, sandworms. Of these, only a few avoided their larger brothers and the pre-spice water pockets to emerge into maturity as the giant shy halud. Not all sandworms would become a giant titanic sandworm, 
but some, however, were captured before maturity and contained by the Fremen. The pre-adolescent sandworm was placed on an island in a Fremen siege and surrounded by water. This prevented the worm from growing and stunted it. When the time came, the Fremen would drown the worm and collect the fluid it expelled in its dying breaths. This fluid was the water of life, a powerful poison that would kill all but a worthy Reverend Mother. This was the test of the Reverend Mothers of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood, to take the water and unlock their genetic memories. Also, as a consequence of the violent exothermic reaction from a spice blow and mixes of chemicals under the intense heat and air of Arrakis, the infamous geriatric substance, the spice melange, would be formed. And since the sandworms are seen as only being native to the planet Arrakis, the spice melange can only be found on this single planet. The sandworm's life cycle is absolutely necessary for the creation of the spice melange. Without them, there would be no spice. This spice, even though dangerously addictive, also extends life, heightens consciousness and awareness and was able to unlock prescient power in unique individuals. The spice was also used by guild navigators of the Spacing Guild for safe, faster than light space travel. Without it, this would be impossible. This therefore makes it the most valued commodity in the economy of the Galactic Imperium. Without it, the Galactic Imperium, as we know it, would soon collapse and descend into anarchy and chaos. The Imperium and its billions of inhabitants are therefore beholden and dependent upon these awe-inspiring creatures that roam far away from civilization in the deep deserts on Arrakis. The harvesting of melange is therefore essential, but it is also a highly dangerous undertaking due to the presence of the sandworms, as discussed earlier. The Fremen also base their entire industry around the sale of spice and the manufacture of materials out of spice. Due to them learning to coexist naturally with the sandworms in the deep deserts, they are able to harvest the spice manually for their own use and for smuggling off-planet. The author of Dune, Frank Herbert, was inspired by dragons from European mythology that guard treasure when creating the sandworms. Favourites of Frank Herbert included the dragon in Beowulf that guarded a hoard of gold in a cave and the dragon of Colchis that guarded the golden fleece from Jason. Like these dragons, the sandworms of Arrakis will attack anyone who attempts to harvest the treasure that is spiced from the desert sands as if they were guarding it. Even in the third Dune novel, Children of Dune, the sandworms are referred to as the dragons on the floor of the desert. The sand trouts of Arrakis, however, were not originally from this desert planet, but rather appears to have originated from somewhere else. This is suggested also in Children of Dune. Later Atreides II in the third Dune novel remembers via his other memory that long ago Arrakis used to be a wet planet, a planetary Eden, but after the sand trout were introduced to the environment, they dried it up as part of their life cycle. As clearly as if he'd witnessed the events, he saw what had happened on this planet, and it filled him with foreboding for the cataclysmic changes which human intervention was bringing. His voice barely above a whisper, he said, I know what happened, Ganema. The sand trout. The sand trout, he repeated, was introduced here from some other place, this was a wet planet then. They proliferated beyond the capability of existing ecosystems to deal with them. Sand trout insisted the available free water made this a desert planet, and they did it to survive. In a planet sufficiently dry, they could move to their sandworm phase. The sand trout, she shook her head, not doubting him, but unwilling to search those depths where he gathered such information, and she thought, sand trout. It was difficult to think of this mindless little creature as a shaper of enormous events. This is consistent with the physical evidence that can be found on Arrakis, namely salt beds that had apparently once been great seas. If Leto II's other memory is correct, this opens up many interesting questions. Questions like, where did the sand trout originally come from? Were the sand trout and sandworms genetically engineered and created by human beings during some period in the past? Or 
Was there another planet similar to Arrakis out there in the universe somewhere? If this is the case, then it is strange that there has never been any evidence of the sandworms ever existing on any other planet other than Arrakis, even across millennia. The sandworms' true origins remains one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of the Dune Saga. The sandworms of Arrakis have also had a huge impact on culture and religion. They are worshipped and revered as mighty godlike entities by the native Fremen tribes who see them as embodiments and incarnations of the one god of their Zensuni religion. The reverence paid to the sandworm would spread to other worlds throughout the known universe as the Dune series progresses. The native Fremen have also gained mastery over the sandworms. They have learned to avoid sandworm attacks by mimicking the motions of desert animals and moving with the natural sounds of the desert. The Fremen also secretly mastered a way to ride sandworms for transportation across the open desert. The worm riding ritual is used as a coming of age and rites of passage ritual among the Fremen. First, a sandworm is summoned with a thumper. A thumper is a device that generates a rhythmic vibration to attract a sandworm. Once the sandworm is summoned, the worm rider then runs alongside it and catches one of the ring segments with special maker hooks. The hooks are used to pry open the front of the segment, exposing the soft inner tissue to abrasive sand. To avoid irritation at all costs, the sandworm would rotate this to the top of its body, carrying the rider with it. The sandworm will then safely remain above the surface until the hooks are released. Other Fremen may then plant additional hooks for steering or act as beaters, hitting the worm's tail to make it increase its speed. A worm can be ridden for several hundred miles and for about half a day. After this, the sandworm will become exhausted and sit on the open desert until the hooks are released, when they will burrow back down into the sand to rest. Paul Atreides also uses sandworms for troop transport into the city during the Battle of Arrakeen in the first Dune novel. Fremen also use the sharp teeth of dead sandworms to produce the sacred knives they are called Chris knives. The Fremen's tradition dictates that once a Chris knife has been drawn, it cannot be unsheathed until it has tasted blood. The sandworms that inhabit the planet Arrakis are some of the most iconic creatures ever created in all of science fiction. These creatures can be seen as the main symbol of the entire Dune saga. The sandworms and the ecology of their planetary environment haunt our imaginations because they are so fundamental to the story and are the very reason why the Dune saga is possible. They are also the connective tissue for the whole series and just as humans and human societies and cultures change and evolve across millennia, the sandworms themselves also change and evolve with the passing of time. They are creatures of beauty and terror, wonder and horror, awe-inspiring and intimidating, and without these beings, the Imperium of the known universe would fall.